With Thanksgiving being just around the corner, I wanted to share with you guys some Thanksgiving favorites. These are, are some Thanksgiving sides. These are absolutely delicious items. I hope that you guys will like each and every single one of these. Our family absolutely loved them. We devoured them. There were like no leftovers, you guys. I hope that you guys will like them too. Let's get started. To get us started, we're going to be making this southern cornbread dressing. You guys, this is a show stopper. I showed this in the very beginning because we loved it the best. So to a medium bowl, we're just going to be making some Jiffy cornbread mix. You guys, this is super simple. I'm just going to be making this exactly how it says on the package. I'm going to need like a third a cup of milk and one egg stir it together and then I'm going to put it in my 8x8 dish and put it in the oven. I think it calls for like 450 degrees for like 10 minutes or something like that. It doesn't take very long to make at all. You can definitely make some homemade and I actually think homemade would be a million times better but this recipe kind of calls for a lot of different things and I wanted something a little bit more fast and easy but when it comes to Thanksgiving I would probably do it homemade to be honest with you but this turns out really sweet um, this type of cornbread mix is kind of on the sweeter side in my opinion so um, just kind of keep that in mind when you're making this jiffy cornbread mix if you don't want your stuffing to be super um, sweet then definitely do like a homemade version and I'm so sorry if I said stuffing instead of dressing I know that's very offensive to some people <laughs> And then I need a Italian loaf or a French bread loaf, whichever. I just got this one from Walmart. It was super simple and it was very cheap actually. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and chop up all of my bread. I'm gonna place it on like a big cooking, like a cookie sheet. And I'm just gonna place this in the oven at 450 degrees for about 10 minutes as well because I want those all that bread to be kind of toasty. While all that is cooking in a small to medium sized um, saucepan, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a stick of butter. And then I need some onions and celery. I just diced up um, a whole onion. And then I think three to four stalks of celery. I just diced them up pretty fine. And putting them in my saucepan. And just going to let this cook for about five to ten minutes. I want to make sure all of those vegetables are nice and tender. You can also throw in some garlic that's going to flavor your your dressing as well. And um, I mean it it's not gonna hurt it whatsoever, but the stuffing is very, very flavorful um, with all the other things that we're adding to it. Now my Jiffy Cornbread is all done. I just kind of crumbled it up in that pan, threw it into a really large mixing bowl. You're definitely gonna need a very large mixing bowl for making this dressing. And then my uh, Italian bread is all done cooking. So I placed that in the in the saucepan, in the uh, mixing bowl as well. And then I have two cups of chicken broth. This is some homemade chicken broth. Maybe that's why it was super flavorful. I made some chicken broth with that uh, chicken that I had made in a couple couple videos ago. I made like a whole Thanksgiving chicken and so I just used some, some bones from that to make some broth. I'm also going to add in, it says a fourth a cup of fresh parsley, but I just added two to three tablespoons of um, the dried parsley. I added one teaspoon of sage, a, a teaspoon of thyme. And then I'm also going to add in some of this Creole seasoning because I don't really have any poultry seasoning. So I just added that for some extra flavor. And then also I'm going to need half a teaspoon of uh, salt as well. And then I added just a little bit of pepper, about a half of a teaspoon as well. So after that, I'm just going to add in some eggs. I beat up three eggs and then poured that in. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in my mixture of uh, my vegetables. So I did end up adding just a little bit of garlic to that mixture. And then we have my onions and our celery. And now we are going to give that a really good stir and uh, make sure that that stuffing is nice and um, kind of on the moist side. But you don't want it to be like super moist. You don't want it to be super dry either. So it's got to be like a really good consistency. And um, I'm not a huge fan of of dressing whatsoever, but I loved this. This was so, so good. This did not taste anything like the box. Like you guys have to try this. It was so, so delicious. I'm 
going to go ahead and place this in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And you guys, this is what it's going to look like after it's all done. Absolutely delicious. So, so moist. So delicious. You guys are going to love this. Everyone's going to be talking about this one if you guys make this. Up next is some cheesy scalloped potatoes and let me just start off by saying that I do not make a lot of scalloped potatoes very often but these were so so good. So you want to start off by cutting the potatoes and you want to make sure that they're sliced super super thin because the thinner that they are the faster it's going to cook. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cut up all six of these potatoes. Um, I use like the Yukon Golds. You guys can do russet or red potatoes. I just really like yellow potatoes. I think they're super, super delicious. I just have an 8 by 8 dish that I went ahead and sprayed. And I'm placing them upright like this. I'm also going to be putting in some onions in between these. So you want to make sure that you can leave room for those onions and you're going to be putting some cheese on top so you want to really make sure that they're not like in there super tight that there's room for all those different things so i'm just placing them in here and then after i do all that i'm going to go ahead and slice up a whole onion you can you really want to make sure that it's a whole onion and you want to slice that super super fine as well because you're going to be placing that in between all of the potatoes So to my saucepan, I need three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna let that melt down. And then I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour. I want to make sure that this mixture is pretty thick. So, and you can even add more flour or cornstarch to your, to whatever liking that you, you want. Mine was, my sauce came out a little tiny bit on the thin side. So just keep that in consideration when you're making this that you might wanna do maybe like three heaping tablespoons of flour. It's completely up to you. I'm going to add two cups of milk and you can add this slowly or you can add it all at once but you're going to have to stir consistently for several minutes making sure that 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 milk consistency is going to thicken up. I'm also going to add in some salt and pepper also some paprika because y'all know I love paprika. It is just my favorite. It's just so so good. I practically add it to everything and just adds such a a delicious flavor to to all my dishes so y'all know I'll be adding that give this a good stir and then we'll add in our cheddar cheese you guys don't have to do cheddar cheese I think cheddar cheese is really good for scalp potatoes though so that's the cheese that I selected you can also do like a white cheese I think um, like a white cheddar would be so so good as well go ahead and give this a good stir and just it's gonna get thicker and thicker so if it's not to as thick as you're wanting you can also add in more cheese or you can add in more flour just whatever you want to do there Now back to our potatoes. I'm going to drizzle this everywhere and it is going to be so good. I think this is a really great consistency of like how much cheese that cheese sauce that we add to this. It was like the perfect mixture. And then once it's done cooking, you're gonna let it set out for a little bit and it's going to thicken up even more. So it may look a little bit runny now, but after it's done cooking and setting out for a little bit, you're, it's, it's gonna be fine. And you definitely wanna make sure that this is covered. And I placed it in my oven at 400 degrees for about an hour and a half. It was pretty close to an hour and a half. It's between 80 to 90 minutes, and this is what it's gonna look like. So, so good. 
Now I want to make some creamy corn. So to the bottom of my crock pot, I need three cans of corn or you can do two bags of, two to three bags of like the frozen. And then I need one stick of butter. I also need a whole block of cream cheese. It doesn't really matter which cream cheese, just whichever. And I'm also going to put that at the bottom of my crock pot. And then I'm going to add a third a cup of heavy whipping cream. And y'all know I'll be using up that paprika, so I need a half a teaspoon of paprika. And then I did a teaspoon of garlic. I'm gonna put this on low for about four to five hours. I'm gonna check on it and give it a really good stir. I'm also going to be adding in some honey to sweeten this up just a bit. I mean, sometimes that corn can be really sweet. Sometimes it cannot be as sweet. So I like to just add two to three tablespoons of honey to give it just a little bit of a sweetness to add in with that paprika because I just love the, the mixture of like the creaminess and the little bit of the spice of the paprika and a little bit of the honey makes it so so delicious and y'all can add in some pepper that's going to add a delicious flavor as well I always like to add just like a little bit of salt and pepper to my cream corn anyways and yes I'm just gonna give that a good stir and this is ready like you don't this doesn't have to cook for very long at all so this is a super easy side dish that you can just throw in the crock pot and kind of let it go and forget about it here's my two sides and then I have and then I'll show you all four of them um, in just a little bit but I wanted to show you my cream corn and my scalloped potatoes look how divine that is with that chicken so good not everything <laughs> barely everything can fit on one plate so i wanted to show you this one separately and then for the last one i wanted to get, show you some cheesy garlic green beans so i definitely need some foil for this or else you guys are going to be like scraping that pan forever trying to get it clean i need a pound of green beans just make sure that you have already trimmed those green beans and wash them as well I'm gonna drizzle on some olive oil. Uh, you could do about three to four tablespoons of olive oil and then give that a good mix around to get all those green beans um, soaked in with that olive oil. I like to add in some salt. So here I'm adding a half a teaspoon, or actually I think it's a three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. And I did three-fourths of a teaspoon of pepper as well. And then I'm gonna do one tablespoon of garlic and some Parmesan. The, the, the recipe just calls for a couple of tablespoons of, of Parmesan, but y'all know I love my cheese, so I'm, at, I'm definitely adding more than that. <laughs> And then I'm just gonna give that a good mix. I do wanna make sure to, to preheat my oven to 425 and I'm gonna bake this in the oven for about 20 minutes. And then after the 20 minutes, I'm gonna add some mozzarella cheese, or I have this like Italian blend of mozzarella, and I think it's mozzarella, Parmesan, and Romano, I think. I can't remember what the last one is. And, but I'm just going to add about um, a cup, or about a cup of cheese, and then I'm gonna broil this for about five minutes. And then this is what it's gonna look like after it's done, so so good this is the best way to eat green beans my my uh, son does not like green beans but he tolerated these because of all the cheese and the yumminess to it so so good i love fresh green beans y'all so good and this is like my final plate of everything oh my soul my chicken was so good i know i didn't show you that but my chicken was so good the dressing phenomenal i love cream corn and the scalp potatoes were surprisingly so so delicious these sites were absolutely delicious. 
thanks so much for watching this video. Hope that you guys enjoy this type of content. Hope that you guys are ready and prepared for Thanksgiving. I don't know if I am 100% ready and prepared, but it is quickly approaching and I just cannot wait for Thanksgiving time. And I just love the holidays, love Thanksgiving, and I love Christmas so much. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope that you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.